the ecobee smart thermostat premium is one of the best choices that you can get for a home kit thermostat right now i've been using it for about six months now and i can give my honest review on it and tell you why this is the best home kit thermostat in my opinion compared to the remaining ones out there overall it's a great device it's so easy to set up as you can see the back paneling of it has just a couple of wires that you have to plug in the app gives a step-by-step -step guide exactly how to do that based on your previous thermostats wiring one thing i do want to know, mention is the fact that i had to put some plumber's putty between the cables because there was a bit of an airflow and it was messing with the humidity sensor of the thermostat but overall it was a straight process to get this up and running in no time and i feel like this is a great thermostat i've used nest products before and their thermostats as well but i really like the design of this one it looks so minimalistic and new and it just just fits the vibe of what uh, my current place is so i really like the design of it i like the fact that it has home kit and nest doesn't natively support home kit yet so this was the choice that i had between some of the other home kit thermostats I did hear good things about Ecubi, so I decided to try that out myself and see how it works with my setup. Here is the actual thermostat. The premium version does have this nice looking material around it. I would say like a metal silver material. You do have a couple of sensors on the bottom for the air quality. And then you also have speakers and microphones for Hey Siri and then for also playing music through it through Spotify, for example. So it does have a couple of features that normal thermostats do not have, which is great. As you can see, the speaker on the top is where it plays out the feedback from Siri or any other of the voice assistants. And on the back, you have the pins that plug into the back of the paneling where your cables are connected from your AC unit. On the bottom, once again, are the sensors for the air quality and the microphones. But overall, it's a nice piece of glass on top of a nice uh, material body of the thermostat and it just looks really nice and premium which this is one of the main factors why it chose this thermostat because it is on your wall and if you want to match other aesthetic things inside of your home then this is the way to go the premium does come with this nice remote sensor that it's only one actually but you can buy multiple but you can place it anywhere in another room where you might want to average out the temperatures if you have a couple of rooms that are colder or hotter so this is the actual temperature. You can see it has a little small base on the side, which I use, but you also have an alternative option to use a wall mounted plate and then put the sensor on the wall. But if you use this, uh, the little stand, then you just place it about four feet off the ground and away from any windows or any heat sources. That way it doesn't, you know, tinker with the actual readings, but it's just magnetically attached to the base on the bottom. And then you have a little battery compartment on the back with a setup code to get this set up with your Ecobee thermostat. And then you have a battery, which is a CR2477 inside that you can replace once it's getting low. I'm not quite sure if they have some type of battery notification in the app, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna tell me when the battery is low on this sensor. So it doesn't just automatically stop reading my temperatures. But the menu on this thing is really simple to use. I've seen other Ecobee thermostats before, the older generations, and it was kind of hard to get around. But this one, they've definitely revamped it. You have the weather on the top based on the location of the thermostats, and you can see your four-day forecast, which is something that's nice. Um, I don't personally use it. I mean, I can just take a look at my phone. But you do have the options to switch between heat, cool, auto, auxiliary hitting, if that's something that you do have. And then obviously off if you want to turn the term, uh, temperature off for the thermostats. And then you have Siri because I've set that up for my uh, setup, but you can have Alexa and Google Assistant. The hamburger menu gives you options to change, you know, the system mode and the comfort setting based on the different comfort settings that you choose with the Ecobee. The one thing that the premium has is the indoor air quality, which the other version of this thermostat does not have, which uses the sensors to see if the air quality is good. And it tells you your CO2 levels. It doesn't tell you the specific levels, but tells you how the level is compared to the normal range. You can turn off Hey Siri if you don't want it to use that command. And you can change the volume by pressing the toggles on the left and the right or pressing individual parts of the bar. You can't just slide it. But overall, like I said, very simple UI to use, which I really enjoy because it shouldn't be that hard to operate a thermostat. They shouldn't make it that hard. 
but you do also have some settings that you can modify on the actual device, which are a couple of bit more than the actual ones on the app. So it is better to modify these settings on the actual thermostat, but you can change your Eco Plus mode to save additional savings. You can set up a schedule. Uh, I don't use this schedule. I only set one HomeKit schedule because I use scheduling through the HomeKit app and not through the actual Ecobee device. Because if you use both, then it's gonna take priority for the Ecobee schedule and not your HomeKit settings. So do keep that in mind. Here you can pair your home kit inside the settings. So if you've not paired it, it will give you a barcode, which you scan just like any of the other, not a barcode, but a QR code, just like any of the other home kit devices that you may have. If you're familiar with those, you can set up Amazon Alexa and then Google Assistant as well. One of the things that I couldn't really understand in the beginning was how to change my Delta for my heating cool, meaning how many degrees there is between each temperature. So if you'd like to keep it in the auto range, if you want it to be between three degrees different, four degrees, five degrees, you can change it. But I believe the default was four degrees, so I did not like that. I kind of lowered it. It does keep the AC and the heat constantly going more often, but it does allow me to change it to a closer range. You can turn on AC over max, that way you can cool the place better for humidity. Or you can change your humidity sensor correction, that way if it's displaying the wrong humidity and you have another device that says otherwise, then you can configure them to be the same so it doesn't throw off your metrics. But overall, I'm saying the UI is great. I really enjoy it. Nothing hard to it, you know. Uh, I did want to mention the sensors and how they worked. The additional sensor that came with it, the smart sensor, does have a follow me mode, which basically when you press it, uh, when you put it in another room and you walk into that room, it's gonna uh, sense occupancy. So then it's gonna know if there's someone in there and then it would average the temperatures between the main thermostat and any additional sensors you have. However, if there's multiple people in multiple rooms with multiple sensors, then it's gonna take that global average between all of them because it cannot sense just on specific rooms. So if you have two, then it would just average the one that you're currently in based on the occupancy sensor, which is great in my opinion because that's how it should work and it's just automatic in the background. But here you do have the option to use the Ecobee app, as you can see displayed on the screen. I have the Ecobee app running and I can change the modes through it. And the UI looks really similar to the UI that you get on the actual device. So you don't have to figure out a brand new menu. You don't have to figure out a brand new UI just so you can use a thermostat. Once you put on the heat mode on the phone, it's almost instantaneously, depending on the Wi-Fi network, of course, and your network on how it changes the device. So as you can see, I made it to 75 heat. So it automatically went to 75 heat on the device. And it says holding because I've set that option in my settings to hold the, uh, the temperature for the thermostat until I change it again. Otherwise, sometimes it would follow a schedule if you have the EQB scheduling in the first place. But in the app, you also have the ability to see the different sensors and then also tell you if there's any motion and it'll say if it's occupied or if it's not occupied at the moment that you're accessing the sensor. Here's the HomeKit app uh, or the Home app, which I use mostly. I don't even touch the actual Ecobee app, but here I can change the thermostat. As you can see, I turned it to off and almost instantaneously it turned the thermostat off as well as shown on the little icon, which is a great plus that you have multiple apps to use if one's not working or you know, HomeKit sometimes is down for some reason and the Home app is not working, but you can use Ecobee app to turn it off as well. Regard, uh, regardless of those apps, you can also set up automations if you don't want to use the actual apps. So it does everything in the background. You can go ahead and do automations when you leave the house and when you arrive to the house. You can do the same thing with the Ecobee through their app, but then it relies on everyone having that app installed and it would have to track based on the motion sensors of anyone's home. It doesn't affect pets. So that's one of your worries. It does not affect pets, but Overall, I do it so I have all of my users at home on the home app. That way I can manipulate the automations based on who's home at what time and then what temperature setting I want. And that's mostly the temperatures that I use depending on if someone is home or not. So I really enjoy the fact that I can integrate this into my home with HomeKit since I have a fully automated HomeKit, you know, apartment. So that's why I use home in general and don't mess with other apps besides other functions that are not available in the home app yet. So you can see that the thermostat also has this nice always on screensaver. So it shows you the weather outside, shows you the thermostat, what uh, temperature inside, and then it shows you the time on the bottom. 
And that is great because if you're just at the you know sofa in the living room, the thermostat is in your living room, then you can just glance over and see from that bright display what kind of temperature it is, which is a great screensaver. And it's kind of like an always on display, which I really enjoy. But coming back to the scheduling, I did want to mention when you do automations for HomeKit, make sure that in the Ecobee device settings, you change it to uh, the whole duration to until you change it. Because basically by default, it comes where based on the next scheduling task, it changes the temperature automatically. So what I did personally is I went and I changed the Ecobee scheduling to one schedule called HomeKit and made a certain range. Then I went into the device settings for the Ecobee and put the whole duration to until you change it. That way when HomeKit sends an automation over the HomeKit network, then basically it's gonna keep that setting and not use the Ecobee setting. So do keep that in mind. But overall, this thermostat is great. I really enjoy the fact that it's HomeKit integrated. That was actually the main reason why I bought it. And the bonus part of it is the way it looks. But overall, if you like this video, then definitely give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Zanif Tech is out.